word unprecedented. The word has never been used so many times in such a short period of time. We're talking three months. I'd say we've redefined the word. There's a whole new understanding of the word unprecedented. And then the second thing is the situation is HR on steroids. Never has there been a time where so much has occurred that has impacted businesses and their employees in such a short period of time. We've experienced unprecedented governmental control. Many businesses were shut down being deemed non-essential. What in the world? Now, what is a business owner to do? You've got to reduce your workforce. So does that mean you furlough them? Do you terminate them? Do you re just reduce hours? Oh, maybe they could do remote work. But do you know, are you ready for remote working? Do you have the systems in place? And how do you deal with employees' fears about all this COVID stuff? And what are you supposed to communicate? And how are you supposed to communicate it? And now you're supposed to provide paid leave. What's that all about? And oh, yeah, okay, so now I guess I have to cancel insurance. All of these things are HR on steroids. It's like we've been drinking from a fire hose. There's been the World Health Organization, the CDC, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Birx, the President's Coronavirus Task Force, the IRS, and the Small Business Administration's loans state and local health departments, the state government regulations, and now county and local governance, uh, guidance from the county uh, commissioners and the city government. In such a short period of time, we've heard from all of these experts telling us what we should do, what they're gonna do, what we need to do to flatten the curve. Our lives have been turned upside down. Now it is amazing how rapidly the federal government has reacted to try to provide help during a time that they knew was gonna be catastrophic to human lives, livelihoods, and our robust economy. So once the experts shared what they know or think and then imposed upon us, which is unprecedented, it was then each of ours turn to determine what this meant to us. I refer to this as the dash. What we do now in the time before COVID BC and whenever we get to the after COVID or the AC because it's all about the dash. It's about what we learn, what we do and how we prepare. And there's two ways that we're dealing with this. I mean, personally, we're reevaluating what's important. We're getting to maximize the time we now spend with our family. In many cases, that's been a positive. We're learning new skills. We get to cut hair. And that's great, or maybe not. And we understand what we're all in this together truly means. And then there's the professional side. There's the new awareness of the importance of hand hygiene and sneeze hygiene and workplace cleanliness to protect people from getting sick. And the good news is that this is gonna help every year when flu season comes around. And employers are realizing that they can be more flexible. They can provide greater comfort with remote working as we saw many having increased productivity. And we're learning how to use Zoom and other video conferencing programs for handling meetings and other gatherings. We're getting to test our flexibility as our in our business models. And now we're having a reality check. This did happen and it will happen again. We can be better prepared. One thing we've learned along with the tragic deaths and people's lives being stopped in their tracks is it's brought out the best in people. We've got neighbors helping neighbors. We're now reaching out to people we just used to wave hi to. We check on our elderly neighbors to see how we can help them. 
Can we get them some groceries? Do they have all their medicine that they need? And we're making sure that we're providing for others' needs. We've got neighbors starting to sew and giving away the cloth face coverings for their neighbors and their whole community. <clears throat> we have a whole new set of heroes, our healthcare workers. We, have you ever seen so many signs promoting and supporting and thanking these people for putting their lives on the line? We've had restaurant tours accepting they get donations from people who want to provide meals for the healthcare workers and other first responders. And it's helped generate innovation. Businesses have pivoted to meet the needs of the crisis. We've got breweries and distilleries switching their processes to make hand sanitizers. Car manufacturers have retooled to make respirators. And I'm sure that many of you have had to pivot and change how you've done things to meet the needs of this crisis. And these are just a few of the things. It's changed the world of work. In the not so distant past, there had been resistance on the part of some employers to implement some of the things that we were forced into doing, like remote work. Remote hiring has also been embraced and the government has accepted workarounds for it for like I-9s. And we will become more virtual. Insurance companies have offered telemedicine for years, but now employees were forced to use it and have become more comfortable with it. Most insurance companies now make it a zero cost option for employees. Some doctors have even gone to visiting hospital patients virtually via video screens on a remote controlled cart. Our roaring 20s are roaring. Oh my goodness. But not in the ways that we thought it would. It's been a financial house of horrors. Some businesses will make it out okay, and some will not. However, just like generations before us who've lived through unimaginable horrific times and events, we too will get through this. From the beginning of this crisis, I've been working to separate out fact from crazy so I could provide the best information for my clients. So let's look at just some of the facts. We know that COVID-19 is highly contagious. It's a virus that mainly attacks the lungs and it's extremely dangerous for those with weakened immune systems, the elderly and those with compromised immune systems. <clears throat> As a nation, we're trying to balance public safety and health with reopening the economy. And we're learning how the, the government works. We understand again how a bill is made. And we're learning about the 10th Amendment, states' rights. And some old systems have been exposed. For instance, the Kansas Unemployment Insurance computer system. It could not possibly handle the influx, the flood of claims for unemployment. As of the end of May, Kansas has had 9,719 COVID cases with 208 deaths. And Cedric County has had 585 cases with 21 deaths. Those are just some of the facts. Now let's look at some crazy stuff. It's an election year, so everything appears to be politicized, like masks. <clears throat> and there's conspiracy theories, like who did this and why they did it. There's been inconsistent approaches to reopening for each individual state. And there's been the ongoing debate about how long surfaces can be contagious. And then there's just some crazy stuff because things keep changing. The laws keep changing, regulations keep changing. For instance, OSHA. For those of you who do the OSHA Form 300, you know that you have to report that uh, when someone has a workplace illness or injury. Well, OSHA had said that if you have an employee who has COVID and they die from it, 
or they have to be hospitalized, only then do you have to put it on the Form 300. Well, just last week, they announced that they're changing that. And if you have an employee who becomes sick with COVID, you have to do a workplace investigation because you have to determine whether or not they got sick at work because of work. And then you have to put that on the Form 300. PPP was another thing that was just crazy. Um, it's been a, a great program. It took a while to get it. There are some unintended consequences and, and the whole reason that bills usually take so long to be developed is so that they get input from a lot of different parties so that it can be a well thought out bill. In this case, they were just trying to get help out there right away. Now, currently, the Congress is working on bills to help identify how we can extend this longer besides just the eight weeks for a PPP to be forgiven. So I do anticipate that there's going to be more law changes that are going to come that are going to make this much more flexible and workable for people. So we're going to have to hang on and wait for that. Another small little thing that is just crazy is COBRA. <clears throat> for those of you who know, COBRA is the continuation of insurance coverage when an employee loses their insurance. They've got 60 days to sign up for it after they lose coverage or they, there's some change. Well, now the government is saying that they're going to extend that to someone has 60 days to sign up for it after the announced end of the outbreak period. And if you're going, if you're saying to yourself, when is that exactly? So it's gonna to have to be announced whenever that's gonna be. And then people who have lost their insurance are, are going to have 60 days from that date to get signed up for COBRA if they want it. That's just crazy. Now, Governor Kelly decided, or her hand was forced, to turn the disease prevention onus over to the 105 counties in Kansas for each county to make their own determination as to how they're gonna handle disease prevention. Sedgwick County is recommending that we adhere to the state's Ad Astra plan, which is Governor Kelly's plan, but it's not gonna be enforced, meaning that people aren't gonna be cited and they're not gonna remove licenses and they're not going to arrest people. It's, they're at recommending that we follow the guidelines. They also did modify the definition of public gathering. It's up to 20 persons commonly known to one another. And this is through phase two, which could end Monday, June 8th. To help my clients and other small and mid-sized business owners, I wanted to help answer the question, what am I supposed to do? So I comprised this checklist for businesses, COVID transformation, for safety, well-being, and protection for your employees, your customers and clients, and for your business's future. It's the 5C checklist. These are the five categories you as a business owner need to be thinking about. Compliance, communication, culture, continuity, and celebration. The first C, of course, is compliance. And you've got to get ready for the reopening. Now, you may not have been closed at all, but if you have been closed, and if you've been shut down for a period of time like these last couple of months, you're going to want to make sure that you check your HVAC system and you get it cleaned, you get your filters changed, and you flush your water system. If you have a landlord, visit with them and talk about what their plans are for the building for the common areas. Check your lease agreement to see what it says about cleaning and maintaining those public areas. And if any of you are in a building with an elevator, be sure to find out what the protocol is going to be about using the elevator. How many people can ride at once? And do they have to wear a mask? Have they marked the six foot social distancing spaces for people waiting for an elevator? For those of us who don't have to worry about elevators, we can thank our lucky stars. 
And I'm sure you've been out and about and you've seen what all these different companies are doing for sanitation and social distancing. And I'm sure that some of you have put a lot of these things in place already. There are plexiglass dividers, people wearing masks and gloves. They're cleaning between clients. People are really trying to do the best they can. Now, what I want to suggest is that you make sure that your cleaning protocol and your safety processes make sense for your business. I've seen some folks have the plexiglass divider and wearing a mask while they're at their cash register dealing with customers. That may be a little redundant and it may not be necessary. So make sure that it makes sense for your business and it's following the requirements. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your employees also understand why you're doing it so that they buy into the whole thing and train them how to clean properly with which cleaning products. You're going to wanna to make sure that you document your regular cleaning. And if you use daily checkoff sheets, you're gonna to wanna to keep them. You might need to defend your cleaning processes. If somebody makes a claim that they got sick by being at your establishment, whether it's an employee, a client, or a customer, you're going to need to defend yourself. OSHA has had over 5,000 coronavirus-related unsafe condition claims filed, and only 58 of those have been from meat processing plants. If you're bringing, as you're bringing your employees back, what steps are you gonna to take to monitor their indicator symptoms? And this is important. You've gotta do it daily, and you have to do it before they come into your place of employment. Are you going to have them self-monitor? There's daily screening questions that are being recommended, asking within the last 48 hours, have you had a fever, a cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, headache, chills, aches, fatigue? Have you had a loss of the sense of smell or taste? Have you been nauseated, having vomiting or diarrhea? If you decide to use temperature, there are a lot of things to consider with that. And you have to do that again before they come into the workplace. And there has to be the safety of people taking the temperature. And there has to be distance between that process of taking the temperature and other people to maintain confidentiality. If you've not already done so, have you made arrangements for your workspaces and your public spaces for that six foot social distancing? Have you determined if masks are gonna be mandatory? And if so, by who is going to have to wear them and when? You also may be dealing with someone who's afraid to return to work. That isn't one of the things that's covered under various new laws. You're gonna to need to be understanding and listen to their concerns. You know, you may be able to calm their fears by letting them know all of the things that you've done to clean the facility and what steps you're going to be taking to ensure everyone's safety and that they're protected. And of course, <laughs> there have been new laws. There's the Families, Families First Coronavirus Response Act. There is a poster that goes along with it that is to be put up in the workplace and sent to any employees who are working remotely. This is what the poster looks like if you don't have one, you can get it online or you can uh, email me and I'll be happy to send it to you. There's also a link on this five C's check sheet that I, you can get from me as well. This tells employees what their rights are, that they're entitled to paid sick leave and paid extended family and medical leave. And it gives the six reasons why. So you're going to want to make sure that that is up, that that's placed up or posted up. You also are going to need to make sure that you have policies that have been developed and communicated to your employees. You have to have a policy for the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, how you're handling social distancing and what the expectations are and what will happen if people violate it. One for monitoring first indicator symptoms, what are you doing for it, and your sanitation protocol. Now, the good news is, that these can be temporary policies. They can just be an addendum 
to your handbook. They don't have to be included in the handbook because it is hopeful that this will be done with these by the end of the year, but they are temporary. Now, there are also other current policies that you're gonna to need to update and edit, and that's gonna be your attendance policies, any leave policies you have, safety policies about how you handle visitors and children, and other policies that be uh, specific to your business, whether that be remote work or travel. And again, you can make these be addendums to your handbook so that when this is over and you don't need them anymore, you can just do away with the addendum. Or you could edit the policy to state things like, uh, this is how we will, this will be handled in cases of emergency, infectious disease outbreak, or other major disasters. Now you are gonna be required to keep your FFCRA leave requests and your tax credits for four years in case you get audited. And the same is true for the CARES expenses, that's the PPP and the SBA's EIDL loans. I would also suggest that you keep your sanitation checkoff sheets along with that information, because again, if you have to be, if you have to defend yourself, you wanna make sure that you can prove what you did to keep your place clean. And that is, again, if someone tries to claim that they got sick from your facility. The next C is communication. Now communication, on our best days, we don't communicate well. Many of us think we do. But to get someone to hear what we've said, there's the rule of seven, saying that you need to repeat something at least seven times. And people learn things differently. So you need to do it in different formats. And during times of great uncertainty, as we're experiencing now, your employees truly need to hear from you. They need to know what you're planning or what you're thinking about. The future of your business is the future of their job with you. Be sure to reach out to your employees regularly. Daily is good. And that's especially true for remote workers because they're more isolated. You also could survey your employees. You wanna get their input about how things are going and get their suggestions so that you can make sure that you're providing the best work experience that you can during this incredibly difficult time. You wanna let your employees know that you care about how they're doing. Remind them of all the benefits and things that you have available for them that there's zero deductible on telemedicine if you provide benefits. If you have an employee assistance program, be sure they know about that. And other things that you may be aware of that's available out in the community, be sure your employees know about that. On my uh, five C's checklist, there is also a link to the US Chamber of Commerce's um, template. This is a template that you can use to make a little poster that you're gonna to wanna to put up everywhere, at the front door, throughout all the public areas, in your employee-only areas like break rooms and restrooms, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you let people know what you're doing to protect their, their well-being and their safety. But here's the thing that's most important. You've gotta make sure that you're doing the things that you say you're doing. You're going to want to set safety and business goals to make sure you're on track and of course you can adjust those as you need to and remember when you think you've repeated yourself enough you're just starting to get your employees attention this unprecedented time of covid crisis has caused many of us to rethink our business model and some of us has had have had to pivot this may change your company's culture you may be more structured now in how you address safety and cleaning protocols. And so this is the third C, culture. You wanna embrace this pivot and refresh your marketing efforts to reflect this and support your commitment for safety and well-being, because you want to explain this change to your employees, your customers and your clients. And of course, be sure you update your policies and procedures so that supports these new realities. The fourth C is continuity. 
Now that we've experienced a major crisis that has impacted our lives and livelihoods, what disruptions did you experience in your supply chain? Did you have delays in shipping? Did you have to find different suppliers? Did you experience increased costs? Costs. If you made changes to your workforce, be sure to follow up with your various insurance companies and state unemployment, workers comp, health insurance, and any other vendors that you have. Make sure you've provided training for any new procedures, including the cleaning and the workflow processes. Those things that you were gonna get around to, they may have become a major got to now, like upgrading your IT needs. So be sure and evaluate that and take care of the things that need to be done. Because as much as we would like to just get through this, to get to the other side so we can get back to normal, we absolutely, we need to capture our lessons learned through this and develop a disaster preparedness plan so we can be better prepared next time. And there will be a next time. The final C is celebrate. This is going to be so important for everyone. We've been through a lot and we have a lot more to get through. Stuff we probably can't even imagine. And we certainly hope there won't be another wave of inf infections that might cause us to have to shut down again. So to help keep spirits high, schedule events to celebrate and make them fun. Celebrate milestones in the various governmental phases that you just passed. Celebrate hitting goals that you set. Employees' anniversaries and birthdays. And if you have remote workers, be sure to set up virtual social events. Here's an idea. Invite your employees to join you for lunch. Just make sure you follow the restaurant's guidelines, of course and celebrate your appreciation to your employees and your customers and clients for being a part of your team getting through this and for supporting your business. Everyone's been impacted by the COVID crisis, some in many ways and some in just, just some ways. And I've just reviewed a few. To help your business's COVID transformation for safety, well being, and protection, you can request my five C's checklist. It's my gift to you. You can request it from my website under resources or just email or call me and I'll be happy to send it to you. My contact information is on the screen. Now, let me see if there are any questions in the chat area. Tristan, do you see any questions? No questions yet. Okay. Well, if you have any questions that you didn't get entered and you're trying to type away now or they come to you later, please just email me and I'll be happy to provide you an answer. I'll either get, let you know what I have or I'll research, research it for you and give it to you. And if you're dealing with an HR headache, give me a call as HRX is the cure for your HR headaches or migraines, like in the case of COVID-19. So thank you for your time and attention today. I wish you all good health and prosperity.